Well, hello, I'm Mance Harmon, CEO and co-founder of Hedera Hashgraph. I'm glad to be here with you today. I've been asked to give an introduction to Hedera, the network, the technology, what it is. So this is going to be starting from scratch for those that have never heard about us. Uh, I'm going to start from the very beginning and look forward to uh, to diving in here and, and uh, being with you. So we don't use blockchain. We use Hashgraph. Hashgraph is a consensus algorithm that was created by Dr. Lehman Baird, who's my co-founder. And Hashgraph achieves something that nothing else in the market achieves. It achieves asynchronous Byzantine fault tolerance, which is the theoretical limit of, of security in terms of security at the consensus layer. Um, it's, it's the best that, that one can achieve. There, there's nothing better than ABFT. Now, what does that mean? Uh, practically speaking, what it means is that there are categories of attacks that simply aren't possible in the same ways that they're possible with non-ABFT protocols. Distributed denial of service attacks, attacks on firewalls that can partition networks. You know, there's a range of attacks that one has to be concerned about or assumptions that have to be made when talking about a consensus algorithm. ABFT eliminates those categories. Hashgraph implements ABFT while at the same time achieving fantastic performance, and that's the innovation. ABFT has been around for decades, but there's always been this trade-off between security and performance. What Lehman invented was uh, a consensus algorithm that achieves both simultaneously. So we decided to create a public network using Hashgraph in 2017. And there were four fundamental obstacles to mainstream adoption of public DLTs that we identified at that time. These are those four, performance, security, stability, and governance. In terms of performance, we knew that we needed many thousands of transactions per second. Hashgraph, Hedera, the network that, that implements Hashgraph today, achieves that. It achieves 10,000 TPS. It has the uh, capacity to process 10,000 TPS today with it, with seconds of latency to finality. And that's in the beta version of the, of the network. It's throttled down. We expect to go much higher than that. And then to millions of transactions per second through sharding. So Hashgraph checks that first box. In terms of security, I've already talked about asynchronous Byzantine fault tolerance. Hashgraph achieves that and the performance simultaneously. So the algorithm itself checked two of the four boxes that we identified back in 2017. The other two are more business related, stability of the network and governance. When we talk about stability, specifically we're talking about stability in the costs per transaction. That's really important to developers that are building their applications on top of the platform and need to predict what their costs are going to be. They shouldn't be a function of any given token price. That's, that's a disaster. And the, the network is never going to fork or split into two competing networks that, that fork the state. You end up having applications and the state of those applications existing on different networks which cre creates chaos. And we've been able to both through technical and legal means um, provide strong guarantees to the market that the Hedera network is never gonna fork. And then finally governance. I'm gonna spend a few minutes on governance. We view the, the form of governance being as important to adoption and use by large enterprise and mission critical uh, users, mission critical use cases that, that have, uh, you know, governments and enterprise customers behind them as, as the tech is. And what we decided to do was first look at the Visa network. Actually, um, a guy named D Hawk was the founder of the Visa network in, in the 60s, and he wrote a book about that experience in the early governance model that they used back in the 1960s. It's called One From Many. In this book, he outlined the governance model that they came up with. We started with that and applied it to our situation, our context here today. And what that looks like, excuse me, what that looks like is a council 
of 21 today, 21 organizations growing ultimately to 39. These are some of the largest, uh, most respected organizations in the world that are providing the oversight of every part of the project. The council members were intentionally chosen to span geographies. You'll see that there's no concentration necessarily in a given, on a given continent or in a given geography. They, they're chosen to span industries. It's not the case that these were a bunch of banks or a bunch of tech giants. There is good representation across industries and we'll, that representation will, will increase across industries as the council grows. And then finally, the council members are gonna end up being distributed through time or decentralized through time in the sense that the council members can't stay council members forever. They can serve up to two, three year terms for a max of six years before they have to rotate off. So when we talk about governance, to be more concrete what that means, the council members actually provide oversight by committee of the various functions of, of the platform. So for example, there is a technical steering committee, TechCom, that provides oversight and prioritization of the, of the product roadmap, the features that are being developed. There is RegCom, the regulatory committee that provides guidance and oversight and policy making as it relates to regulatory posture and, and positioning uh, in, in legal matters in general. There is CoinCom, which sets pricing for the API calls and decides how to use treasury and how to manage treasury, et cetera, et cetera. So it's that kind of direct oversight that is provided in this global council of this enterprise, uh, excuse me, this ecosystem of, um, of users and uh, managers of, of the network, and that's growing over time. So when we think about the progress of, of Hedera, for those of you that haven't heard much about the project, we actually got started in 2017. It was in 2017 that we decided to create the project. We hired the initial team members. In 2018, we introduced the world to Hedera. We raised a bunch of money. We launched the network in a closed form, um, meaning that not everyone could use it, but only by invitation. We minted 50 billion HBAR and, and that was 2018. In 2019, we began to operationalize the council. We added our first five members in February of 2019. We added an additional five members through 2019. And then we opened the network later in 2019 for general access to, to those that wanted to use it. And we began to observe how the market was using the APIs. In 2020, through that experience in, in dealing with the, the ecosystem and the network users, we decided to create a couple of additional services. The Hedera consensus service, which I'll talk about, as well as a token set service or tokenization service. And we continued through 2020 adding council members. This year, um, life has changed in a lot of ways. We've seen fantastic growth in use of the network, generally speaking. Uh, it's also the case that the size of the users of the network has increased. We've always had good, small and medium sized business and startups using the network. The enterprises are now going to market, beginning to go to market with their solutions. And we've logged a bunch of transactions. This is the architecture. You can see here at the bottom, we have the nodes of the network itself being run by our council members. That will scale. We will add community nodes, node operators that are not on the council. And then the following step will be to allow anonymous nodes. So we intend to scale to many hundreds or thousands of, of nodes. Today, we're, the, the network is operated by the council members that I mentioned. We have these two primary services that are being used, the consensus service and the token service. The consensus service, think of it just like, quote, blockchain as a service. It's Hashgraph as a service. The developer can create a packet of information, submit it to the network, to the consensus service. The network puts a consensus timestamp on that service and creates a stream 
of consensus order transactions back to the developer that they then use however they want in their in their business logic. It's think of it as stripping away the smart contract layer from the consensus layer. The consensus provides a stream of order transactions, then the business logic gets executed somewhere else in a different network. Could be a private network, could be a public network. Separate from that is the token service, which we launched in February of this year. It makes it possible for developers to very easily spin up and issue tokens and manage those tokens in a decentralized fashion. Both KYC, AML features, minting, burning, locking, all of those types of features can be managed through a multi-sig uh, protocol in, in, uh, in a decentralized way. The governing council provides oversight of all of that. What we've seen in terms of use cases is very broad, but these are some of the major categories of usage of, of the network, data integrity, tokenization, et cetera. When we look at, here we go, I'll skip that. Um, when we look at the sort of waves of business innovation, what we see are three, process integrity, meaning using the tokenization service, excuse me, the consensus service to provide transparency into existing business processes across business networks. ADSDAC is a good example of that. They're in the advertising agency. They can provide transparency in the use of their service to their customer base. Everywhere is providing transparency and monitoring of crates of COVID vaccine for the national health system and in the UK. If the temperature exceeds a certain threshold, that's a problem for the vaccine. They monitor that and they record those, those that tel telemetric data through HCS. In tokenization, we have customers that are, that are enabling uh, the market to very easily go to market with their, with their tokens. Uh, GoMint and Infinite by Suku are a couple of examples. Those lead naturally to decentralized marketplaces where Rectify is building a marketplace for the exchange of, of energy credits and offsets and Galaxy by Spencer Dinwiddie is making it possible for influencers and uh, creators to create tokens that monetize some part of their, of their celebrity or, or business. When we look at actual adoption and usage of the network, in the first 18 months since launch, we actually logged more than a billion transactions. A few months more, we're now at 1.4, almost 1.5 billion transactions. That exceeds what Ethereum has done since the very beginning of, of their launch. The size and scale of the deployments is growing. What you don't see here are the enterprise cases that have yet to go to market. And when the enterprise cases do go to market, the usage and volume of transactions they're going to market with far exceeds anything that we've already logged to date. That's what I view as scale, right? So when we talk about how the industry is going to scale, um, the industry already has fantastic scale in some ways, but it's still niche. When it's not niche, by definition, that means that enterprises and, and large organizations have begun to adopt and their volumes are now being reflected in the use of the layer one protocols and, and we're leading that way. What we're doing with Chainlink, uh, is to create, um, the, to integrate Chainlink, obviously, into the platform to be used with our services. That's being done uh, even as we speak. All the standard features that you get when using Chainlink, you'll be able to use those with our existing services. We're partnering with Chainlink as well to bring DeFi to the enterprise through the creation of a, an enterprise, or I should just say generally a DeFi accelerator that can be used by the, uh, the community at large, uh, but also our enterprise customers. Chainlink, by the way, was the first Web 3.0 organization to join the Hedera Council. We welcomed them back a few months ago, and uh, they've been a great partner. We look very much forward to, to working with them and the full Chainlink ecosystem as we scale this out. So with that, thank you for the, the time. I hope that was informative and happy to hear from you in, in the coming days and weeks. 
Thank you so much, Mance. Uh, appreciate what you're doing with Hedera Hashgraph and uh, Chainlink Labs. Excited to be a part of it. So thank you for coming on. Thank you.